Hey everybody, it's Mr. Smeads, and today we'll be covering topic 6.9, which is hydroelectricity. Our objective for the day is to be able to describe the use of hydroelectricity in power generation, and also to be able to describe the environmental effects of hydroelectricity. The skill that we'll practice at the end of today's video is to be able to justify a proposed solution. So the first thing we'll do today is look at some hydroelectricity basics. So hydroelectricity comes from the movement or the kinetic energy of moving water. And in this case, water is going to move past a turbine, which will spin the turbine. And then of course that turbine can power a generator, which will generate electricity. Um, again, this water could be moving with the natural current of a river or the tides of the ocean going in and out, or it could be water that's falling through a channel, an intake channel in a dam. And so we'll talk about those systems here shortly. Uh, it is by far the largest renewable energy source globally. So if we take a look of a graph here of global renewable energy generation, we'll see that hydropower is uh, you know, far and away the biggest source of renewable energy globally. And then we should also know that China, Brazil, and the United States are going to be the three biggest producers of hydroelectricity globally. So first we'll talk about by far the most popular way of generating hydro hydroelectricity which is water impoundment. And water impoundment is just a fancy word for a dam. So we're gonna store water behind a dam. This is going to basically create an artificial lake, which we know as a reservoir. And so then what happens is when we dam the river, it's going to enable us to control the flow of the water. And so that channel that allows the water to flow through the dam can either be opened wider to allow more water in or be closed to allow less water in. So this allows us to also control the rate of electricity production. So this is really convenient. So we look at a image here to kind of help us understand. Again, this dam, this big concrete structure is built across the river. We get this huge reservoir and artificial lake, and this is basically stored energy. Uh, at any time, this channel down here can be opened. Water can flow through to spin the turbine, which powers the generator to make electricity. And so again, really important to note that we can control the rate of electricity production by controlling the rate of water that flows through the intake channel. It's also going to allow us to control the flooding that happens oftentimes in rivers seasonally. So you'll get snow melt or you'll get especially heavy rains and that will cause downstream flooding. But with a dam, we can control the rate of flow downstream from the dam. And so that allows humans to build settlements that are closer to the river because they don't get periodically flooded. It's also going to be a really big source of tourism or recreation dollars that happen uh, that flow into a local economy when you have a huge reservoir. So people can go boating, they can go fishing. And so there's some really big you know, economic uh, impacts from it. Two issues we have to be aware of are the fact that the flooding behind the dam displaces a lot of ecosystems that used to be there. And we get something called sedimentation. Sedimentation is where your sand and your silt and you know, your dead organic matter is going to be building up behind the dam instead of naturally flowing downstream past the dam. We'll talk about the impacts from an ecological standpoint of this, but one of the impacts from an economic standpoint is that the dam becomes less efficient as more sediment builds up behind it. And we'll also talk about a solution to kind of alleviate or reduce sedimentation later. Next, we'll talk about a less common system of generating hydroelectricity, which would be run of river systems and tidal energy. So in a run of river system, we have a smaller dam, and instead of creating a huge reservoir, it's just going to divert water through a man-made channel that runs parallel to the river. Uh, in that channel, there will be a turbine, which gets spun by the natural current of the river. And of course, that is going to power a generator to make electricity. It's less impactful on the surrounding ecosystem because you don't flood the area behind the dam, and you also allow the natural movement of sediments downstream. So that's an important point to point out. If we take a look at a diagram, we can kind of understand we have a dam and there's still some accumulation of water, but it's not going to be flooding to the same degree as a water impoundment system. And so it just kind of diverts this water on this man-made channel. And that's going to run through eventually a powerhouse, which will have the turbine and the generator in it. And then it runs back into the stream. So again, less impactful on the hydrology or the flow of the stream. Another thing we should know, though, is that it doesn't generate nearly as much electricity because it's just not going to be as much stored water. And it also can fluctuate with the river level. So if you have a year where there's less rainfall or less snow melt that contributes to the water level, that can decrease the amount of power you generate in this run of river system. We also have something called tidal energy. 
Uh, tidal energy is where the ocean tides, which move in and out uh, predictably each day, are going to spin a turbine underwater and generate electricity that way. So if we take a look at a diagram here, uh, when the ocean is at high tide, it's going to be moving in closer to the land. And so we'll get this water kind of accumulating behind this sort of dam of sorts. And then when the tide flows back out, it will flow past the turbine and spin it um, and vice versa, you know, when it comes, when the tide moves in. And one limitation of this, though, is that it's only really available in coastal areas that are very close to the ocean. And so this is not something that can necessarily be an energy solution for everyone really, again, limited to coastal, you know, societies. Now we'll look at some of the ecological, environmental and economic impacts of dams. So first we have to know that dams flood habitats behind the dam. So forests and wetlands could become completely submerged and basically no longer exist as habitats. And then rivers, which are kind of shallow, fast moving bodies of water become lakes, which are vastly different ecosystems. So if we look at a picture here, we can understand the magnitude of this flooding. And we can see that, again, what used to be forest and perhaps wetland or even grassland is replaced with a lake, which again is a very different ecosystem. So organisms that relied on the forest or the wetland um, no longer have a home or they have to migrate. Another important thing to know is that sediment buildup is going to change both the upstream and the downstream ecosystem. We'll talk about why this happens here in a second. Uh, and then another thing is that it's going to deprive the ecosystems downstream of the nutrients that come with the sediments that flow along the bottom of the water. So remember, sediments can be broken down bits of organic matter, which contain a lot of nutrients like phosphorus and nitrogen. And wetland ecosystems especially depend on that really fertile organic matter flowing into them. So a dam prevents those downstream wetlands from receiving those nutrients they need. This is a graphic that will help us understand both the upstream and downstream impacts of a dam. So we can see in a free flowing river that does not have a dam, we have fast moving water. We have water that's a little cooler because it is shallower and it's not kind of soaking up the sunlight because it's moving so fast. We also have what's called a spawning habitat or kind of a rocky stream bottom. This is an important place, one, for fish to lay their eggs, but two, for organisms like macroinvertebrates, which are basically big uh, aquatic insects to live in. And that's a really valuable habitat for them within the stream. When we put a dam in place, what happens is we get this buildup of sediment. So we have all this sand and organic matter and debris, and it's going to cover up that rocky stream bed so that we no longer have that stream bed ecosystem that's so vital for fish spawning and for macroinvertebrates. We're also going to get warmer water behind the dam, and that's because it's sitting there and it has a higher surface area, so it's absorbing more sunlight. Warmer water means less oxygen, so it can support fewer aquatic species. And then we also have all these debris and all this organic matter that's trapped, and that deprives the downstream ecosystem of some of those sediments, which again contribute to that habitat on the bottom of the stream, but also the nutrients that flow into those downstream ecosystems. So it really changes the hydrology, you know, the flow of the water, but also the transfer of nutrients. For environmental impacts, we have the increase of fossil fuel emissions just while we're building the dam. So it is temporary, but that's something we have to know. It requires a lot of concrete. And we're gonna have increased evaporation as well because that reservoir is such a large surface that it comes into contact with more sunlight, it takes in more heat, so more water is going to evaporate. Uh, and then finally, we're gonna have some methane release because all of that organic matter flooded by the reservoir is going to break down or be decomposed in anaerobic conditions, meaning low oxygen conditions and that produces methane, so that's a greenhouse gas. When we look at economic impacts, we have human homes and businesses that have to be relocated from the reservoir zone, which will be flooded, so that's a consequence. Uh, initial construction is going to be very expensive, so the upfront cost is very high. Um, electricity is very efficient to produce after this initial cost, but someone has to fund that huge cost to start up. A positive impact is it's going to create a lot of jobs, so people needed be needed to run the dam, to operate it, to maintain it. So that's a benefit. Uh, and then also all of that sediment buildup will eventually lead to something called dredging, which is where large cranes have to be brought in to basically grab and pull that sediment out of the reservoir. And that's an economic impact. Another one is going to be the loss of ecosystem services that happen, especially in those downstream ecosystems like wetlands, which are gonna be less productive and less stable due to their deprived uh, nutrient flows from that dam blocking all those sediments. So one consequence of dams that I kind of breezed past on the last slide 
is the disruption of fish migration. So fish have a hard time migrating upstream uh, past the dam because obviously they can't swim through the dam and they can't jump over it. Um, so a solution to that that's really common is a fish ladder. A fish ladder is basically a series of cement steps or pools that the salmon can use to swim over the dam. So they can flop and jump from pool to pool. And then this you know, diagram can kind of help you visualize that more. And eventually they move up and over the dam to the other side. Now this is really beneficial because it enables migratory species like salmon uh, specifically to swim upstream to their spawning grounds, which is where they will reproduce and maintain their population. Uh, this is beneficial for the salmon themselves, of course. It's beneficial for the predators of salmon like eagles and osprey and bears and anything else that can get its paws on a salmon. Uh, and then it's also beneficial for humans because humans really utilize salmon as a recreational and you know a food source. And then another alternative to this, which is kind of a fun thing, um, this is like one of the cool apes concepts that you learn in this class, is a salmon cannon. It's a real thing, it sounds made up, but it's an alternative to fish steps or a fish ladder where basically they catch the fish and they feed them in this big tube. So we have a gif of this here where, you know, the fishermen catch the fish and then they feed them into basically this big suction tube, almost like when you go to the bank and you send in your little deposit tube uh, and they feed the fish in and it just shoots them right over the dam to the other side. So some pretty ingenious ways that humans have come up with to still help migratory species like salmon migrate past the dam to get upstream. And then finally, we'll look at some benefits of hydroelectric dams. Uh, so some benefits include that there are no greenhouse gas emissions released when producing electricity. So of course, fossil fuel combustion produces a lot of you know, carbon dioxide and all sorts of other air pollutants. But once the dam is actually constructed, when we're generating electricity, there's no air pollutants released and there's no greenhouse gases released. Uh, that reservoir can also serve as a really big source of tourism dollars. So people come to boat and to fish. Uh, it's also going to be a source of jobs. So you need a lot of jobs to build the dam and to maintain it. It's going to be really reliable, consistent electricity. So we don't have to worry about water running out. We don't have to worry about the rate of electricity production because we can store water behind the dam. So it's very reliable and it's an affordable source of electricity. And again, as I alluded to earlier, uh, no air pollutants released when generating electricity. So we're not going to get SOx and NOx and particulate matter like when we combust coal. And that's a great you know, alternative source of energy for the people that live there. They get better air quality and for global warming as well. Uh, another benefit is this idea that we can control the seasonal flooding of many rivers. And so in the United States, it's actually only 3% of all dams that are used to generate electricity. The number one use for dams in the US and the number one reason they're built is actually recreation or sort of increasing property values. Uh, the second reason is flood control. And so dams are actually more so utilized for, again, controlling floods and building recreational uh, reservoirs. And um, one thing that we do have to know is that this flood prevention is really good for humans. You know, we get to have a reservoir, we get to build our homes and our cities closer to rivers because we don't have to worry about them flooding. But there's consequences, especially to wetland ecosystems downstream of the dam. So if we look at this diagram, it can help us understand the hydrology of a river and what happens when we dam the river. So the way this works is that mountains, you know, or rainfall somewhere, or you know, melting ice is going to contribute to the river. It's going to flow, and then as it flows, we have a floodplain on either side. So this periodically floods with water, which adds both water and nutrients to the surrounding ecosystem. And especially when we get out to estuary habitats or wetlands like the salt marsh, we deposit a lot of sediments here. This makes this a really rich, productive biome because so many plants can be supported by the nutrients in those sediments and so many organisms. Uh, but the problem is when humans develop this area by building a dam, we take away that floodplain. So now there's no flooding periodically. That means we can build our irrigation systems and our agricultural systems so much closer to the river because we don't have to worry about them flooding. We can also build our cities and our towns right up to the edge of the river because we don't have to worry about them flooding. What that does though, you notice, is we've removed the salt marsh, the estuary habitat. And so that is a big impact of this dam. We don't get the same sediment. We don't get the same nutrient deposition in the Delta where the river opens out into the ocean. And so it really alters the ecosystems that we typically find in these estuary areas. So our practice FRQ for topic 6.9 today is to practice explaining two benefits other than agriculture and recreation 
that people gain from constructing dams on rivers.